Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmaso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly. Email tmaso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we are discussing a model launched in 2010. This is the second generation Alangu Unzona 1815 flyback chronograph, and it is all of those things. It is 39.5 millimeters in diameter in white gold. The watch measures 11.3 millimeters thick, and from lug to lug, it is 48.5 millimeters across the wrist. 20 millimeters is the spacing between the lugs. I'll throw it on my wrist of 16 centimeters circumference. And you can see it's large, but it's not oversized. Being under 40, it's a good size. The lugs do have an enormous arc to them across the wrist, which is why I'm going to recommend this watch for wrists no smaller than 15 centimeters circumference. You can see my wrist is 16. I've got a little bit of clearance. It's not quite overlapping the edge of my wrist, but it's not far off. It is, however, nice and thin with a domed bezel sliding easily underneath a dress cuff. The strap is upscale, large rectangular scale alligator leather in dark brown. It's got a little bit of stuffing or bolstering. We have a monotone stitch. We have a folded edge. We have calf skin on the bottom. You can see it is a brand new Longa factory strap. We have the Longa pin buckle. And if you've seen my longer reviews before, you can just fast forward past this part. But I always like to reintroduce this to folks who haven't seen this buckle before. It has an elevated bridge so that the strap actually sits inside the buckle when it's on the wrist rather than stacking up underneath. It also has a little retaining bar. So if you're like me with a small wrist and you use the smallest hole, or you even punch a smaller hole, you know that sometimes it can be hard to get a strap watch off your wrist. So to prevent the strap from getting pinned on the pin, so to speak, we have this little retaining bar that makes it a lot easier to remove the strap if you do have a much smaller wrist. The buckle, as you can see, has a little brocioli stamped B inside of it, and Longa doesn't make cases, so you can always look at the maker's mark. There is Centro right there, which is an Audemars Piguet-owned company in Switzerland that makes cases, which explains why this German watch has Swiss hallmarks on its case and also on its buckle. Those parts are made in Switzerland. The case, however, is distinctively longer. Now you can see this is white gold, the type known as gray gold. It's white all the way through and never needs to be rhodium plated. That's why it's not quite as blazingly white as platinum. Rhodium plated white gold is. We have a satin finished mid case. We have lugs that are dramatically stepped out from the case band rather than integrated. The lugs are polished and they come to a nice tapered end. We have a bezel that is a small vertical portion and then it slopes into a shallow domed profile. We have a crown that is longa branded. And then we have pushers that are satin finished on their outer face, beveled on their edges, and you can see polished on their flanks. The dial is a solid disc of sterling silver, so it is precious metal too. It is machined and then galvanized the silver white opaline or frosted color. We have a track outboard for reading minutes, seconds, and chronograph fractions of seconds. We have fired blue steel alpha hands at center and a counterweighted lancet seconds hand for the chronograph. Two sub registers. Each sub register has a very fine concentric pattern internally. You can see that they're deep cut into the dial. Then we have polished hand centers. And the watch is a flyback, which means you can reset and restart with a single push of the trigger. You do not have to first stop. This is ideal for timing things that occur in rapid succession. And although the earlier and later 1815 chronos would include some sort of pulsometric or tachymetric scale outboard, this original 2010 second generation model did not include an outer scale, which allows the dial to be a little bit more open. It's broader, flatter, it doesn't have that scale flange outboard, so it reads as a larger watch on the wrist. You can see there's a very subtle step to that outermost track. The dial has surprising depth. It does not, however, have a power reserve or date, which is how it differs technically from the datagraph. That allows it to be thinner. But on the reverse side, the movement looks the same as the datagraph. And what's important here is that the movement is technically identical, with the exception of the lack of the power reserve and the date. So this is the second generation datagraph movement, caliber L951 and 5, and that means that it has the 60-hour power reserve, of the dado up down, and the case back looks exactly the same. We have a large balance that's almost the radius of the movement, much like a pocket watch, beating away at 18,000 vibrations per hour. You can see variable inertia 
bolts on the balance, so it is a free-sprung balance for precise adjustment in five positions, which it receives, and shock tolerance. So it's a free-sprung balance with an overcoil hairspring, the overcoil, allowing it to keep excellent time in any physical position. Not every Lunga has that overcoil. And again, it's beating away at 2.5 hertz. We have a lateral clutch, which you can see here. What I find particularly ambitious is, though the clutch is made of steel, it has the same satination on its top, mirror beveling on its edge, and sharp outward points and inward points where bevels meet. It is very difficult to achieve that on any material, much less on something as hard as steel. We have both black polished screws and blued screws. We have pivot jewels set in chiton, not just on the bridges and the plates, but also in the clutch assembly itself. We have a black polished column wheel that operates with that lateral clutch. We have an instantaneous minute jumper. The bridges and plates are made of what's known as German silver or nickel copper zinc alloy, with the copper giving it its golden hue. Everything that looks silver is made of steel. We have the engine turning on the base plate. We have stripes across the bridges. We have mirrored anglage on steel and German silver parts. We have a freehand engraved balance cock, no two exactly alike. We have a black polished swan's neck fine adjustment mechanism. And then you can see that the movement has lovely depth to it. We also have two different sizes of engine turning on the base plate, which is worth mentioning. And you can see from every angle, you can actually look into this movement diagonally, not just from directly over the top. And yes, it does feature hacking or stop seconds, all of this water resistant down to 30 meters. Reach out to Tmaso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details of this 1815 flyback chronograph.